I recently purchased this. It is a 10 to 60 volt DC step up converter. Basically, you put power in through one side and you get power out through the other. And what's really nice is it actually gives you two options for the power input. You can either A, put your power in through these two screw connectors, or you can just run it sh straight off of a regular like uh, wall wart type thing. I took my IBM ThinkPad power supply connector, and you can run it off that. And it can put out a maximum of 10 amps, which is pretty nice. Unfortunately, a regular power supply won't, uh, won't really do too well for powering this, because, like, for instance, this laptop power supply is rated for 16 volts at, I believe, 3 amps. Well, if you multiply the voltage by 3, that means it uh, subtracts or divides the amperage rating by a third. So, if I tried charging a battery at like 50 volts or whatever, I would only be able to pull 1 amp from it because that would be pulling 3 amps from this charger, uh, from this uh, power supply. But anyway, you have your power output then, and it's pretty simple. You just kind of put your wires into those little screw connectors, and even got a fuse and stuff like that. It looks really well, well made. It even has a little LED to work with it. I've had some cheaper models of these. Like, I got some 0 to 30 volt ones, like that big or whatever, and I've had them blow up before because they, they wouldn't regulate the amperage going through them. But this model has an amperage rating. This is the amp... Uh, potentiometer. Basically, what happens is, let's say you set it to 48 volts, like you set it with this one, this is the voltage, and it's at 48 volts, and whatever you're powering, or charging, pulls mm, 50 amps or whatever. Well, you don't want to have that. So you set it down to like 6 amps. So what it'll do is it will adjust the voltage accordingly. So if, if it's pulling too much, it'll lower the voltage, and then as uh, as the amperage gets lower and lower, it'll raise the voltage to keep the amperage uh, the same amount because amperage and voltage coincide evenly. Well, not evenly, but proportionally. Now let's test it out. Ah, well, ev well, evidently it's set at the lowest possible voltage. So as we go up, it slowly brings the voltage up. Quite versatile. I plan on using one to charge my uh, electric bike battery. Let's see how high it'll go. Holy cow. There, there is a, a delay between it going down because these capacitors hold the power for quite a bit. Although I imagine if you're holding, if you're running a load off of it, it would dip down right quickly to, a, uh, to whatever setting you put it at. But my bike battery usually I, uh, it is pretty much dead at about like 46 volts or so and so I charge it up to about 8.4 or whatever but I'm thinking about upgrading my bike battery so it's instead of running at 48 volts it'll be running at 52 volts it's a little over voltage but I've but I've seen some people actually run their bikes their 48 volt motors at like 72 volts or whatever but I'll Run my bike at 52 volts, and that should work out pretty good. Okay, so now I got a 100 volt DC motor hooked up. I got the voltmeter, and I have this. Let's see how it works under a load. Detecting power now. Okay, test number
I'll be adjusting the amperage setting. It's not very warm at all. All nice and cool. Well, I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with that little test, and I'm really happy to see that that the amperage potentiometer actually does adjust the amperage. That'll probably save me from blowing that thing up. Overall, I think this was a well-executed plan of circuitry. It just, it was, it's, it's made really well, at least to to me. I've, I probably haven't seen the best type of circuitry out there, but it looks nice compared to the stuff I've seen. Now, the capacitors, they are mounted nicely. They're flush to the circuit board, so they don't really wobble too much. And so that, that, that can really cause a lot of trouble. The main coil is kind of wobbly, but it's, it, you can tell it, it's not meant to be connected to the board. Not counting, I've had a couple of them that, that whenever you bump them, they crack and you have to replace them. So this is a little bit of uh, leniency in case you hit it, because even in recording this, I dropped it once, <laughs> as you can see there. Now, the chips that we have in here, we have the, UC, uh, the UC3843AN, which I can't see who that was made by. It's just probably a random chip. But this is um, a pulse width modulated power controller. Basically, it, it's the chip that controls the MOSFETs. I think it controls these two, or all three. I don't know, because there's one, two, and three inside here. But of course, this one doesn't really get that hot, so I'm not not so certain what that one runs. Whenever I first got this, this was bent over. These pins were coming out like here and moving over, so I, I, I pushed it back over. But that's not too bad. And this chip over here is a CM358. I couldn't really find anything on the internet about it, but I could find stuff about like the CM358A and other chips that were similar to it. And it was kind of just a, a vague definition of it working for a DC converter. So, well, it, it's in a DC converter, so I guess it's I guess it's at home. And I really can't overstate that whoever thought to put that barrel connector on there, along with the screw connectors for the input, was a genius, a certified genius. Because, I mean, you can do so much with it. Like for instance, if I want to run this dual LED uh, volt amp meter on here. I simply just run the panel off of the spare voltage input. So now I'm running it off of the open inputs, and I can use these three wires to monitor the outputs, which is like, that's awesome. I love that. Well, I hope this video was super informative for you, and thanks for watching it. 